Hello, today we are going to jump into birth practices and parenting practices that can affect milk supply. So in our previous video, we discussed different things that affect milk supply positively and negatively, um, just as a general consensus and what lactogenesis is and signs of your milk coming in. But now we're gonna dig into more specifically of just little things of parenting practices and birth practices and immediate postpartum that can positively or negatively affect your milk supply. So things to be aware of, not things to shame or anything of the sorts, but things to be aware of that can positively, negatively affect and how to avoid or suggestions to move along with those. So when we talk about birth practices, we want to be aware of any kind of interventions that can negatively affect baby to um, be more groggy or to um, possibly not have that immediate skin to skin right away or different birth practices of or hospital practices of after baby is um, birthed that maybe that skin to skin isn't done right away or we have um, babies taken away to do different checks and when medically necessary it's medically necessary but we want to think about these other times where we can maybe do a delayed um, weight check, delayed uh, check for their length, or any other um, checks or follow-ups that they might be getting in, those, uh, in a hospital or in your provider setting. So, but we really want to encourage that golden hour where baby is undisturbed on your chest and this is going to really um, encourage them to do the breast crawl and to get onto the breast uh, right away, as well as having that bonding and that connection. So um, this also goes into like immediate postpartum and postpartum days after, just of setting up a good plan as to people coming in and out of your room if you are at um, a hospital or even at a birth center, depending on how long you are there, but especially in a hospital, often we have friends and family that want to see baby right away and they want to celebrate that with you, which is amazing. But sometimes this interferes with being able to breastfeed anytime, anywhere, not have to worry about um, different comfort levels of you or your guests coming in and out, and also being aware of nurses and doctors coming in and out and how that might affect you personally or baby, if they're gonna be distracted or if there's gonna be loud noises or just a lot of different things happening in commotion because they just came from this comfy, cozy world and into this very bright and loud world where um, they're not used to being handled by multiple people, as well as just all the noises and all everything for them to see and the lights. So there's different things to be aware of and if you are, once you're home, being able to think about a line in a period where it is limited people coming to your house and this just allows you to be able to encourage um, breastfeeding habits of being able to have your breasts available at any time for them to encourage that. So when we go into just parenting practices and beyond that, we want to look at rooming in versus independent rooming. So rooming in and most pediatricians will recommend up to the first year of being in the same room as the parents um, as this can lower SIDS and this can lower other um, concerns. But also some parents that are very strict on having the baby in their own room from day one or even you know from month one, month two, and so on. These are practices that can negatively affect um, your parent or your breastfeeding journey just as if they are in your own room or if you are practicing safe co-sleeping, being able to have um, breasts available immediately or if you are able, if you did have to go through into another room, then maybe by the time you hear them and by the time you get there, they might be so fr flustered or frustrated and scared that they may not be able to, or ready to nurse right away. So that can cause some frustrations and they start to wake up more and then they are harder to go back to sleep as well as breastfeed sometimes. So those are different things to be aware of as well. Um, in my past video, we talked about scheduled feeding. Um, so when we talk about parenting practices that can be a positive or negative effect on feeding, 
we want to look at demand feeding, on-demand feeding from the baby versus scheduled feeding. So just like us, we get hungry and we get thirsty all throughout our day. And sometimes we wake up through the night and we just really need a cold glass of water. So babies have these needs too. And they're out in this unknown world, even well after they've been born, that they just need that comfort of being able to feed anytime, anywhere, any way. Um, and scheduled feeding can negatively affect this. So we also wanna look at swaddling because though it can be great because it kind of mimics mommy's womb and belly, it also can turn off their feeding cues. So we kind of see them kind of scrunt and they're starting to wake up. And because they're so calm and comfy, they'll fall back to sleep. Well, this sometimes when they sleep those long periods, which can be a great relief sometimes, this can kind of pass over their feeding cues that they may have needed to show. And the same goes for pacifiers in these cases. And in the last uh, video, we said how pacifiers can be a great bridge, but they can also be a pacifier. So if we're in the car and unable to breastfeed and we have to get to one point, a pacifier can be a great little tool, but we don't want to be giving it to them to silence their feeding cues that they're trying to give to us. So as well, um, when we jump into all these things, we have to realize that it's exhausting. It really is. And parenting is not easy. It is an amazing blessing and an amazing journey, but it is not always easy. So we hit into these relief bottles where um, mom has to just sleep because sometimes they're up more than they're even sleeping throughout the night. So we want to acknowledge that, but we also want to have support that someone can take care of the baby. And this is why a postpartum doula is such a blessing because they can take care of baby and understand different cues and different ways to support mom and baby but taking care of that finding someone that's going to take care of the baby bring them to you to feed and then take them back and calm them and take care of them while you continue to sleep so rather than getting a relief bottle which sometimes is from breast milk itself that you have pumped prior to going to sleep or sometimes somebody will give a bottle of formula, whether it was indicated or not by you that you wanted them to have that. It's something to be aware of that it's going to top them off or fill them up that when you wake up and you're ready to feed, the baby might not be. As well as depending on the length of your sleep or your break um, between feedings, then you might have to be more concerned about your breast being too full for baby to want to latch on properly. Um, you have to worry about um, being, I'm so sorry, um, blocked ducts or engorgement. Uh, we want to be aware of how often this is happening or severity because we want to avoid having mastitis, um, which can be a, a very uncomfortable infection in the breast. So those are different things. And as we went through, we discussed in our previous video, sleeping through the night can negatively affect um, breastfeeding and your milk supply because if your baby's not waking up, you either are going to possibly have a decrease in your milk supply because milk is not being withdrawn, so it's not being produced more, or you are deciding to wake up and pump while they sleep. So there's different options, but a lot of parents um, are under this notion that babies need to sleep through the night. And there are many studies that show the benefits of babies being up through the night. And I'm not discounting that it is exhausting to be up with babies. My children do not sleep through the night till at least 18 months or older. And I mean up very multiple times throughout the night in those months and years. So it is truly exhausting. And that's why it's so important to have a support system of some kind to be able to counteract that lack of sleep. But when we talk about that, a lot of parents will go into sleep training and night weaning. Um, so prolactin is very high at night, which is going to increase your milk supply and your flow. So that's one of the negative sides of night weaning or um, sleep training as well as skipping feedings can will lower your milk supply as well as cause discomfort or 
um, pain in your breasts. And then um, creating that food and connection is kind of going to be withdrawn from them. So they might be a little more clingy as well when they don't have that food and they don't have that connection through the night when it's dark. And that can be a little scary for babies. But um, like I said, if you're struggling at night and night and your sleep training is one of your concerns or one of your thoughts, meet with um, meet with a lactation consultant, meet with a sleep educator. Um, think about a postpartum doula to be able to support you. Utilize your friends and family, um, and just make sure that you speak out because it is exhausting and it can be you can become very disconnected and it can affect you mentally and emotionally and physically. So those are different things to be aware of. So the last thing that I want you to be aware of for your milk supply is if you go on vacation without baby. So in our previous video, we talked about increasing milk supply by doing a mini vacation with your baby, which is where you are spending a lot of time with your baby, skin to skin, breasts available, um, for them to breastfeed at any time. But now we want to talk about different parenting practices where you are possibly going on vacation without baby. And you, things to be mindful of are that you want to make sure that you are pumping as often and as long as your baby would feed. So to maintain that supply so that when you come back, your body isn't going to dry up or decrease its milk supply so that when you come back to baby that they can kind of go back into their normal routine. So those are just little things of birth and parenting practices that can affect your milk supply. All right, have a wonderful day.